Our ummah has gone through a lot of different times in which we've seen women's voices in different ways. Knowing that we've had those differences is helpful for a 19-year-old girl who's been told since she was 13 that she cannot memorize the Qur'an because the imam will not teach women and he's the only imam of the masjid. For that 19-year-old girl, for the 40-year-old woman who have told me that when they stopped reciting Qur'an was when they hit puberty. And the only person in their masjid who could teach was the imam. And he said, I'm not comfortable teaching women. And they were so impacted by that that they started feeling more and more distant from Islam. And they've told me that now that they've been hearing women recite the Qur'an again in their 40s for the first time, they're opening the Qur'an again. That's a generational reality. That's having children. That's going to 60 and 70 and 80 and maybe having grandchildren. And not opening the Qur'an or never reciting it out loud in your private space because you don't know that as a woman the Qur'an is for you. And in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how women were present. And he recorded women making specific statements for a reason. Like for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the daughters of the Shaykh al-Kabir, who are the answer to the dua of Musa alayhi salam as he's asking for Allah to send him something. They come and they meet him and then she, one of them goes back to her father and she says what? قَالَتْ يَا أَبَدِ اسْتَأْجِرَ Hire him! Scholars of tafsir mention Allah didn't have to say that line. That line is not necessary to understand the story. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say it? So that women know that they were included in financial matters. When the Queen of Sheba is asked about what to do, when she's asking for advice from her advisors what to do about Sulaiman alayhi salam's letter, she talks about what muluk do when they come into the, to the, uh, to the, to the new land and they ruin the land. And then there's an ayah right after she speaks and it says, And it could be as if she's saying, and that's what they do. But scholars of tafsir say that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirming her intelligence by saying, yes, that is what they do. That it's exactly, and this woman is depicted as a righteous ruler, that it's exactly what they do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded the voices of women in the Qur'an for a reason. Whenever you, as a woman, may feel like you're not sure of your status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you're confused, or you disagree, and that's okay. It's okay to disagree. But when you're questioning that part of yourself as a woman, I've been asked by Muslim women, sincerely asking with tears in their eyes, did Allah create women to be like somewhere between an animal and a man? Is that our level with Allah? And if that's what Allah wants, that's fine. That's, I accept that because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. But is that it? When we have an eight-year-old asking that question, and then she becomes a 28-year-old who has internalized that, and then she potentially raises children with that internalization, where does our entire ummah go? We often talk about the next generation and Islam for the next generation. If women are feeling disenfranchised in this generation, who are the great-grandchildren? Who are they tracing it back to? To save the future of our ummah, we need to support women right now. Because whether or not she or you are ever going to be mothers because subhanAllah, Allah has willed each and every one of us to have a different role for a reason. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, this verse I end every time with. Because I want you to remember. <laughs> he has chosen you. And Imam al-Tabari mentions he's chosen you for a quality that he sees inside of you, even if you don't see it yourself. He created you to be a woman of this ummah in a time where women are struggling with being women, in a time where we're being attacked by every ideology, at a time where everyone else is welcoming you onto their understanding. 
He's invited you to fight now. And right now, and honestly forever, maybe absolutely no one will know our names. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forget. And the angels who roam the earth looking for the people who come together in his name, coming together and surrounding you with tranquility and taking your names up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't forget. And one day we are going to be those women in history. So the question isn't whether or not your voice matters. And the question certainly isn't whether or not we are equal to men. The question is what are we going to do to make the future generations of Islam, of Muslims, look and say the women of the past changed the course of history because of their strength in their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you all are deserving of being one of those people. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashidu wa na ilaha 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 ilaha